She was born in New Waterford, uh, attended Mount Allison, and graduated from McGill. Met a certain guy in McGill, I believe. And uh, in 1967, they both moved to Halifax. Ruth, you probably know best as a passionate advocate for the Pier 21 project. She spent something like 20 years pushing a huge rock up a very steep hill and managed to accomplish something that I think is just one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen done. So I have to for that. Of course, she's a past chair of the Pier 21 Society and the current chair of the Pier 21 Foundation. She's been, let's, let's, here, have some boundaries being pushed. She's been chair of the board of Mount St. Vincent, a regent at Mount Allison, as well as serving on its National Advisory Council. She's been the chair of Dalhousie University's annual fund and chancellor emeritus of Dal Tech, which used to be called Tons. She has honorary degrees from all these institutions, as well as from NASCAD and NSCC as well. She's uh, the first woman to chair the Metro United Way campaign. She's a winner of the Human Relations Award of the Canadian Council of Christians and Jews, a Woman of Achievement Award from the Canadian Hadassah Rizzo, um, the Association of Canadian Jewish Studies Award in 2003, member of the Order of Canada in 92, officer in 2000, Received the Heritage Canada Foundation Achievement Award in the Queen's Jubilee Medal in 2002. And that's only the one she told me to tell you about this. <laughs> 53 more. So, clearly a woman who's got way too much time on her hands. <laughs> Dr. Richard Goldblum is the Chancellor Emeritus and Professor of Pediatrics at Dow. He was born in Montreal, part of the fabulous and well-known Goldblum family. I'm an ex-Montrealer. I know all about these. Uh, graduated from McGill in 1949, did postgrad work at uh, the Royal Victoria, the Montreal Children's, and the Children's Hospital of Boston. Came to Halifax, they did, in 1967. Uh, Richard to head Dow's Department of Pediatrics, becoming the first physician in chief and director of research at the IWK Hospital for Children. He's also a founding president of the Halifax Dartmouth Waterfront Development Corp. What that has to do with pediatrics is not clear to me, <laughs> but clearly he's another guy with way too much time on his hands. He's been the president of the Atlantic Symphony Orchestra in the 70s and became an officer of the Order of Canada in 1986. The Gold Blooms. <laughs> it's really embarrassing to have somebody rhyme off all that stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I know. I'm going fast. Now, Liz Crocker, author, educator, entrepreneur, also raised in Montreal. There's some sort of mafia here. <laughs> Summered in Chester as a kid, returned to Halifax in 69, married the lovely and talented Brian, and taught at the grammar school. He was appointed head of the, uh, head of the uh, IWK Children's Life Department in 1971 and later served on the Halifax Board of School Commissioners. Started a regional affiliate of the National Association for the Care of Children in Hospitals. Also earned a master's degree in special education on the weekends and became the first president of the Nova Scotia Advisor Council on the status of women. She also founded the Frog Hollow Bookstore. She co-founded Woozles, now the oldest children's bookstore in Canada, and in 1992 co-founded Plovers, the environmental store. She's the author of the Rosalind Rabbit children's books, as well as Life Beyond Teaching and Privileged Presence, Personal Stories of Connections in Healthcare. So they know a thing or two about pushing some boundaries, so I'm sure you're going to enjoy the conversation with Liz and the Goldblums. Thanks. Thank you very much, Wayne, and welcome, everybody. I can see a little bit of... There's a lot of people in the audience and even up in the balcony. So guess what, Goldblums, you're a real draw. <laughs> this is not a surprise. Um, I appreciate the introduction as well. And really, Wayne didn't need to say all that about me. He could have simply said that I met the Goldblums over 40 years ago. Ruth told me I should wear makeup. And, it, <laughs> and Dick gave me probably the most interesting job I've ever held. So I'm indebted to them, and uh, we really consider Ruth and Dick as part of our family. So some people have asked me um, if I knew what I was going to ask them, and people earlier tonight asked uh, why we weren't talking about what we were going to talk about, and, or had we already done so. Um, I'm here to tell you 
that Ruth and Dick have not heard one question that I'm going to ask. Um, there's been no preparation. I wanted it to be fresh. Um, and no, no rehearsal. Uh, however, I think we've all agreed that we could talk into uh, 2014 with no problem. So our discipline is going to be to uh, stop talking amongst ourselves and open it up to you. So as you're listening with rapt attention, if you also have questions, hold on to them because you will have a chance to ask questions of Ruth and Dick later. So um, I'm going to jump in. You have heard the uh, introductions made of you all these fabulous achievements. Is there something that Wayne didn't mention that you would like the audience to know as we start? <laughs> Ruth, you're dying to say something. Well, I'm really dying to tell you that we have seven wonderful grandchildren, <laughs> and the poster tonight, which is so brilliantly done, are our four great grandsons, and that wasn't, I'm very proud of that. It was effortless, I must say. <laughs> Dick, do you want to take any part of that, or is there something you'd like to add about yourself that people don't know? Uh, well, there's a lot that people don't know, which I'd rather not reveal. <laughs> uh, I had a brief uh, career in the theater, and uh, I had a very brief uh, career as a musician, and uh, that was fortunately for the audience, mercifully brief. <laughs> we, we may come back to the musical theme. Um, because when you say brief career, I still think of you as a, as a piano player, and, and Ruth has her own talents, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. Um, you know, there's always the nature-nurture question. Are you who you are because of to whom you were born, or are you who you are because of the environments in which, which you were raised? And I suspect you didn't get to be who you are just by your own innate talent, although that is substantial enough. Starting with you, Dick. Nature or nurture or both? Uh, well, both, but certainly uh, in terms of following a career in medicine, I was exposed from birth because living in Montreal, I grew up on Crescent Street. Probably some of the people in the audience think of Crescent Street as a street full of bars and cafes and a few chic boutiques. But when I was a kid in the late 1920s, or early 1920s, actually. Uh, <laughs> it, was a, it was the Harley Street of Montreal. It was practically all ph physicians, and typically the doctors had their offices on the ground floor, and the family lived on the two floors up above. And that was the atmosphere I grew up in. So I was exposed to medicine from the very beginning. I could smell ether and alcohol every time I left the house to go to school and when I came back. Uh, and medicine was dinner table conversation. So I learned a lot about patients. I remember, for instance, one particular meal at which my father and my uncle, who was a surgeon, were sitting and talking about a little girl who was then about eight, whom they had, met, she had been running fevers and having purulent infections of the worst imaginable kind, looked like she was going to die. And they'd heard about a new drug in Germany called Prontosil. Probably people in this audience never heard of Prontosil, but that was the earliest form of sulfonamide. They managed to get a very small quantity of this medication and gave it to her. And she recovered, like starting within 24 hours, totally miraculous, written up in medical journals and so on. This was the first child ever be treated with an antibiotic in Canada. And I remember the excitement around the dinner table. Experiences like that, plus hearing patients discuss and meeting other doctors, some of them famous, some less so, around the dinner table, uh, was tremendously, had a tremendous impression on me. And not only in terms of that personal experience, but also in the experience of something which sadly is a disappearing phenomenon, and that is family dining. <laughs> you have no idea how many families never have a meal together as a family. It's an increasing number, and it's, as a pediatrician, it's a situation that really worries me a great deal.